Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about patient transportation. This is going to be divided into two videos. You have one Word document with just the lecture outline on it. The first segment will be covering just a brief overview of wheelchairs and then the types of wheelchairs. And you don't have any accompanying PowerPoint for that. The second segment will go through wheelchair components and fitting and you do have an, a PowerPoint document posted for you if you want the pictures for that. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the video on patient transportation. You Just some brief key terms, most of which you know. Um, one I'm actually going to highlight, which is locomotion. And if you know the song, everybody's doing a brand new dance now, come on baby, do the locomotion. Sometimes that term doesn't get used as precisely as it should. So locomotion really just means getting from one place to another. Doesn't matter if you walk, dance, use a wheelchair, if you are in a cart or a bed. So locomoting or locomotion is just getting from one place to another. Ambulation means just that, standing on two feet and walking to get one place to another. The other term is just propulsion. Propulsion is moving a wheelchair forward. And what we're going to be focusing on is you propelling someone else in a wheelchair and doing that in a safe manner so that when you go to clinicals next semester, which is coming up fast, uh, you'll feel safe and competent in being able to do that. Of course, we also teach patients to propel themselves independently. We'll be covering that in other courses. Um, I think it's important to understand that a wheelchair, for someone who's a full-time wheelchair user, is really an extension of their own body and their own capabilities. Um, so it's not just another piece of equipment, it's really a part of them. And we definitely want them to be able to have as much mobility as possible, and but we want it to be as well-fitting, as streamlined, and as efficient as possible as well. I, I don't like the term wheelchair-bound. I think it makes the person seem like they're restricted in some way. Um, whereas in reality, the purpose of a wheelchair is to free a person up and to allow them to be able to get around as freely and as fully as possible. And there are a lot of different types of wheelchairs and we're going to go over those. Um, I definitely don't expect you to be proficient after this short talk in choosing wheelchairs or fitting them, um, but I do want you to be able to do the basics. If you are in a setting, such as a spinal cord injury unit or a rehab unit where you have people with really significant medical or mobility needs, then you will at that point have to learn a lot more about wheelchair components and wheelchair fitting. Um, and when we pick a wheelchair and the components for the person, obviously the first thing we have to take into account is their functional ability. And I think you'll see as we go through the variety of wheelchair pictures how a wheelchair can accommodate someone who is very fit and active and is in fact an athlete to someone who can't even move their um, arms at all or maybe even their head. So we have to look at the patient's ability. We have to look at, of course, their size and weight. Are they a child? Are they an adult? Are they very overweight? Are they tiny? Do they have some deformities like scoliosis that we have to accommodate for? And then finally, we have to think about what those activities are going to be that they want to do. So all these things uh, need to come together. I think probably what most of you come into contact with are what we would call a standard wheelchair, something that's just used for limited use. Um, this is not it. Um, and then again, uh, people that have to use wheelchairs for longer term. So let's go ahead and start going through the different types of wheelchairs and get you familiar with the terms. So this looks pretty familiar, kind of looks like one of them that we've used from the CNA lab. This is just a basic standard wheelchair. It has the seat and the back are made of just upholstery that's called sling. It's called a sling seat or a sling back chair. Uh, sling because it tends to get a little bit loose over time and kind of has that little bowed look in it. We use this primarily for temporary indoor transportation. So this is the kind of wheelchair you see sitting in the you know, the lobby of the clinic for somebody who can't, who can maybe get to the door but can't walk to the doctor's appointment or for transportation within a hospital or rehab facility. Uh, it's not something we would 
probably choose for long-term wheelchair use. We'd want something that's a little bit more adjustable and a little more supportive. We of course have a lot of people who are who are very heavy or overweight. A standard wheelchair, I, I have 200 pounds on your lecture outline, you know we might be able to go 250, maybe even 300 pounds, but um, you get much higher than that you're really going to need to use a bariatric or a wide wheelchair or a heavy duty wheelchair. One thing I'll point out is if you look underneath there are two cross braces. So here's the one in the front and then you can see just this one bar here in the back. So this has a has double cross braces um, so that it's heavier duty. Obviously it's wider than standard and we'll go through what standard measurements are for a wheelchair in the next segment. Um, and then also you could get that uh, wider bariatric wheelchair in an electric version. So again very heavy duty. So you're looking at you know upwards of 350 or 400 pounds or, or more up to a thousand pounds for somebody like this. Um, I don't have a picture but um, obviously these are for adults. The next thing we're going to talk about are juniors and this would be for a person who's kind of smaller than an adult but larger than a child. So we do have kind of some in between and that light tan wheelchair that we have in our back room is probably a junior. It's pretty narrow, but it's not really appropriate or um, proportioned correctly for a child to use. We do, of course, have children's wheelchairs. Um, this one is designed to accommodate for growth as the child would grow over time. You can imagine wheelchairs are can be fairly expensive. And so if they have a frame that allows for some adjustment of the back height and the seat height and width and depth and things like that, it can last longer for a child and be able to be used for a longer period of time. So here's just some examples of children's wheelchairs. You know they can be very colorful and attractive. They don't have to be ugly brown like ours are. And um, you can have children very very young, two years of age using wheelchairs up to of course any age of, of a person, but uh, the child wheelchairs you're probably looking at up to about six years of age, maybe up to 12 depending on the size of the child, and then again they'd have to transition into the youth chair before they reached adulthood. Just a, a, a version of an electric chair. Um, this is a, obviously has a reclining type feature so that the person can change positions, get pressure off bony prominences, if you think about somebody using a wheelchair all day long, 12 hours a day, without being able to stand up or shift or move their weight, that would be very hard on their skin. And so by having a chair that changes position, it gives the child um, the normal break that you or I would have by standing up or shifting around or moving. Some can be more fun, so you want the child to be able to interact with peers and to play. And so this is kind of a Hot Wheel version. This is uh, one that's uh, definitely made for over, over land to be able to get out and uh, again go on different terrains. And you can see some of the seating modifications. Obviously it's got the big wheels for the, for the sand, but you can see where the joystick is. It's also it's mounted on an abduction block so that keeps the child's knees apart. Um, you can see some seating um, stabilization kind of around the sides. I'm sure she has one on the other side as well to help promote you know good seating posture as she's in the chair. And then again you know I mentioned earlier at the start that we really want to see the wheelchair as a way to allow the person to interact with and be explore their environment and to be active not as a restricted a restrictive piece of equipment and so I think you can definitely see here that this wheelchair is definitely allowing this child to participate with her peers in a way that's appropriate. All right, um, so the next one is a hemi chair, and um, that's short for hemiplegia or hemiplegic. You know that hemiplegia means paralysis on the right or left side of the body, arm and leg. And I don't have a photo, unfortunately, but for this chair, the seat is two inches lower than usual. And the reason for that is that in a hemi chair, if a person's right arm and right leg, for example, were paralyzed, 
they could only use their left arm and left leg. Well, what would happen if they, you sat in a wheelchair and you only propelled with one hand? Right, you'd go in a circle. So with um, someone like that who has hemiplegia, we would not give them a footrest on the intact side, on the intact leg, and they would push with the left arm and steer with the left foot by kind of digging their heel into the floor. So the reason the wheelchair height is two inches lower is to allow them to get a better purchase on the floor. We also have um, chairs that are designed for people with amputations. And what you can see here is that the rear axle, right here, is way back at the very back of the seat. Now, you may or may not recall that the axle usually is kind of in the middle of the seat, or maybe the back third or something. But here, the wheelchair axle is all the way back to the back, and the reason for that is to prevent it from tipping backwards. So if somebody doesn't have, especially if they don't have both lower extremities, um, it would make the front end very light, and every time they tried to propel or push forward, the front end would t tend to tip back or do kind of a wheelie. So by putting the axles more posteriorly, you put more weight forward and you prevent that tippiness. So I mentioned um, one reason to do a hemi wheelchair, uh, a one back was so that the person using just one arm and one leg could propel themselves. Another way that you could have someone with just one arm propel themselves is to do what's use what's called a one-arm drive wheelchair, and there are two different versions. Um, you can see on the picture on the right-hand side, it really has two push rims, and essentially what you do is you, when you want the chair to go forward, you squeeze those two rims together, and that creates a coupling, if you look here on the left side of the picture, between the two back wheels. So of course in a regular wheelchair when you push, say again, just on the left rear wheel, the only wheel that moves is the left rear wheel. By creating a coupling between the two, when you push on the left rear wheel, it would be that power would also be transmitted over across to the right wheel, and both wheels would move together at the same time. Um, I used these a lot in the spinal cord injury unit when we had patients who had both legs and one arm paralyzed, and so all they had was one upper extremity. Now, this, could they have used an electrical tear? Sure, and we can get to that, but this, I think, is in keeping with the thought that you want to have people use as many muscle groups and stay as active as possible. This is another version of a one-arm drive. Um, instead of the a rim, and you don't even see a rim on this side, it's got this big lever, which certainly is um, mechanically advantageous with that long lever arm. And what you do is um, there's a way that you can push forward and it links again the two back wheels and then if you want to turn you rotate this lever one way or the other and it, it you can see it's attached to the front caster here and it will pivot and turn the chair one way or the other. So those again are some options um, for people who have only one upper extremity to use. This is a reclining wheelchair. Uh, you can see in the back here what look like little bicycle handbrakes, but they actually release um, a hinge here at the bottom of the seat of the chair and allow it to recline backwards. So you've been working on tilt table. If you had someone who couldn't tolerate sitting all the way upright, then you could place them in a reclining wheelchair and you could also elevate the legs and that might be a way for them to start tolerating a more upright position. I've also used this kind of a chair for someone who doesn't have very good head and trunk control. That would, if you sat them all the way straight up, would tilt or tip over, but having them reclined allows them um, to be more stable. So that would be another reason um, to use this. I've used it for people with uh, back fractures, not spinal cord injury, but fractures of the vertebra, and sitting upright is too painful, but they can tolerate being partially reclined. and so. In this way, the person can get up and out of their bed and move around and, and start interacting again with their environment. All right. Um, of course, uh, so, so far all the chairs, with the exception of a couple of the children's chairs I've showed you, have been manual chairs. In other words, you use your hands to propel them. 
we of course have electric chairs and most of them are powered um, and steered with a joystick um, and that's usually mounted on one side or the other though if you recall we saw the one in the child's wheelchair that was mounted between her legs on the abduction wedge but usually you're looking at one that's mounted on the right or left side usually the dominant hand um, this is an interesting version it's got big wheels you know kind of where the power is going to be in the middle and then it's got a little caster in the back and two casters in the front so it'll be pretty maneuverable um, and be able to with these big wheels kind of be able to get through a fair variety of terrain. This seating here looks like kind of a captain's chair out of a out of a van. That tells you that this person is probably not somebody who's got a lot of trunk instability or um, head, you know, they don't have any head control issues. This is not a very, it's a comfortable, but not a very supportive seating system. So it would be designed for maybe that older person who's got leg weakness or difficulty ambulating long distances and wants a chair to be able to get around. Um, just another version, a much lower profile chair, you know, no, doesn't look like a captain's chair, doesn't have any head. Um, similar power base, um, and, and there's a battery underneath here, one or sometimes two batteries, they look very similar to car batteries, and so electric chairs have to be um, charged every night so that they can run all day. I thought this was an interesting power chair. This is definitely going to get you where you want to go over hill and dale and all kinds of terrain. Uh, this is an electric chair that has a chin control so this person's upper extremities aren't effective for driving and so right here in front of the face is the control and so he would use a chin, his chin or face to drive the chair. Um, he also has a computer in front of him and there's a bunch of stuff up here that makes me think it's got an environmental control unit on it so he could anything you could operate with a remote he could operate from the wheelchair so he could turn the lights on and off he could answer the phone he could turn the TV or the computer on and off send email all those kinds of things um, and, and you can see he's got a lot of head control here he's got trunk control there's a strap kind of around his chest uh, another kind of a seat belt, fairly extensive positioning for his legs. So this is a person who needs a lot of support for the body and trunk and yet is still able to um, drive and maneuver a wheelchair on his own with the chin control. This is a sip and puff wheelchair and it's a little difficult to see but um, let me just draw your attention down to the bottom. You can see the two batteries down here for one thing so that's what's powering the chair. This unit here you can see this is this long string and then in the front here this is where there's like a straw. So this straw is mounted right in front where the person sits by their mouth, not surprisingly, and they are able to drive the chair by blowing in or sucking on the or sipping on the straw. So if they and and that pneumatic signal goes in and that's what powers the chair. So with a joystick you know you would make the connections by pushing the joystick forward and back. With a sip and puff wheelchair you make the connections pneumatically by blowing in or, or sipping on the straw creating positive or negative pressure. So you can drive forward and back, you can make turns, um, you can usually it's set for two or three different speeds so you can if you blow in once it'll kind of start slowly you blow in again and it'll, it'll click up to the next speed you blow in again it'll click up to the high speed so depending on if you're indoors or outdoors or trying to keep up with other people you can vary the speed um, this person again you can tell has a lot of head support so it's probably somebody with maybe a very high spinal cord injury doesn't have use of their arms this uh, unit on the front here is again an environmental control unit where they could operate lights, um, answer, dial and answer the phone, turn the television stereo on and off, things like that. So that's a sip and puff wheelchair. So we've, we've kind of gone the gamut and now what I want to show you are just some specialty chairs for people that are of different abilities. Oh, before that, this is kind of an interesting one. This is a stand-up chair. So the base um, 
starts, you know, down regularly, but then it can kind of go up on top of itself so that the person can use it. I've never actually seen this in practice, but I think it's an interesting concept. Um, there are sport wheelchairs, though, that are designed um, either for very active users indoors or actually for sport activities. But they tend to have very low backs, um, minimal, if any, armrests. This one actually has brakes. Many of them don't, or the brakes are real far down here. So the person, when they're propelling with a big stroke, doesn't catch their hand on the brake. Um, different, usually a plate instead of separate footrests. This one does have cross braces, so it folds up, and many have a solid frame. So we'll look at some other ones. Um, when you're looking specifically for sports that require a lot of stopping and turning and pivoting, you will always see the wheels canted out at an angle like this. And again, you can see the person's legs are just kind of tucked in here. It doesn't have separate footrests, and the frame is, is a solid rectangle. This one also has um, little protections around the feet so that when a, they're playing basketball and other people run in to this person, they don't break break his feet. So kind of like here with rugby, you can see the cages around the feet, um, the canted wheels. You can also see the, see the plastic covers over the outside of the wheels. Um, some don't have spokes at all, or some will have these covers to, to protect or cover the spokes and prevent people's hands from getting caught in there. Again, tennis even fencing, so all sorts of uh, variations on wheelchairs and stabilization to allow people really to do any of the activities that they, they want to participate in. So this is back to that idea of the wheelchair as an enabler of activity, not a restrictor. Uh, this is a racing wheelchair, so this is the kind of wheelchair someone would use if they're racing, on, usually on a track, though they can do road races as well. Um, so they sit in here. It's kind of like a sulky chair, if you've ever seen sulky races with horses. So um, they sit in this little bucket back here um, and propel here, and then they have this long, obviously this long front wheel sticking straight out, but their feet kind of tuck under. Um, he doesn't have his feet tucked because he is training, so he's on essentially a wind trainer practicing. Uh, but this is what they would look like. So their feet kind of tucked in but you can see these huge upper bodies and then their legs, which are atrophied because of paralysis, are just tucked underneath them, so flexed at the, at the knee and tucked back. A little off-road chair, sometimes risk-taking behavior, never, never really ends, and so this is a way to do some, um, some road racing, off-road racing, really.